What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another video today and for today's video it's going to be a rad movie review for a new 2023 film, a new Brandon Cronenberg film got released called Infinity Pool and I wasn't going to let this one slip by me. I love both the films that he's previously done, Antiviral and Possessor. I didn't see those films in the theater so once I heard there was a new Brandon Cronenberg coming out, Maya Goth was in it and Alexander Skarsgård was in it. I was not going to miss the chance to check this out in theaters, so today you're going to hear my thoughts on my positives, the negatives, the rating, then I'm going to send you all home, and of course this is just my thoughts and my opinions, that means I would love to hear from all of you in the comment section, share your thoughts on this film if you've seen this one. So let's do it, roll it! This is going to be a non-spoiler review for Infinity Pool. I don't want to mess up anything or spoil anything. Like I said, today we're going to dive into my positives, negatives, and my rating. And in terms of my excitement for this film, I was highly anticipated and excited for this film because I'm a huge Brandon Cronenberg fan. He did Brandon Cronenberg fan. He did Possessor and Antiviral, and those are two of my favorite body horror films in the last like. 10, 15 years. They're fantastic. If you haven't seen them, I highly recommend checking those films out. And in terms of Infinity Pool, what you're going to get is a very wild ride, creative, and probably Brendan Cronenberg's most highly conceptual concept type film. But is this a great film? Did he stick the landing? Let's talk about it. Right off the bat with the positives is that I think Maya Goth, I think she's a standout blast in this film. And, like, she's she's easily my favorite part of this film for real. And, like, her acting is just fantastic. Like, she's great in X. She's fantastic in Pearl. And she's just as freaking good in this film. And she commands every screen she, or every scene she's in, she commands the freaking screen for sure. And this is just one of those films that, like I said, it's not going to be for everybody. I must tell you that for sure. This film is not going to be for everybody because it's, a very style over substance type film. That's how I would describe this film. And the style, there's heavy style in this film, be it the cinematography, the acting, the, you know, the shots, the colorization, all those things, you know, lay a hand in how wild this film is. My other favorite thing about this film is the music and the cinematography. Like I said, the cinematography is gorgeous and there's a lot of like poster worthy shots in this film, you know, shots that you look at and you're just like, damn, that's freaking sexy or that's badass. Like, I want that on my wall. Like, those kind of shots, you know what I mean? And the score and the music, it's there. And it has, like, there's some moments in here where the jump scares kind of got me. And it's not, like, scary jump scare stuff. But there's sudden things. Like, one, out, like, I won't, like, you know, I don't want to spoil it. But there's one where someone's talking and then something happens. And you're not even watching it. It happens off screen. But it's a certain sound that happens. And it kind of almost got me. I was like, oh, damn, like, what the hell? Like, and then, like, you find you cut to the scene where, where the sound came from and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's it's one of those kind of movies. Like, it's got unexpected kind of jump scares, a creepy vibe. And what I love about Brendan Cronenberg is you're always going to get, even if it's a simple theme or a type of film that we've seen done before, you're always going to get a creative, new, unique way that the film has been executed. And that's what Brendan brought to the table. Like I said, the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because he is the son of David Cronenberg so you know what you're kind of going to get when you go to these type of films. Another favorite thing of my mind for this film is that this film is wild, it's sexy, and it's dirty, and it's not afraid to be out there. Like I said, this film is kind of like an LSD trip. And like I said, there's a lot of crazy sexual stuff going on. This is definitely not the film you want to, you know, take your kids to or go see with your mom. Like, it's it's out there. It's wild. Like I said, it's kind of like an LSD acid trip. There's a lot of wild scenes. You know, if you're sensitive to photosynthesis or epilepsy type stuff, this this film will get to you because there's a lot of sequences where there's, you know, flashes of scenes and colors and different, you know, angles like the opening shot to this film is like an angled shot that just keeps going and you don't really know what's up what's down what's right what's left the camera just has no sense of direction and it just kind of floats 
into nothingness, kind of like a Gaspar Noir film. And for me, why I was really excited about seeing this film is mainly because I'm a huge Brendan Cronenberg fan, like, and I wanted this to be the first film of his that I saw in theaters. Like I said, I missed Possessor, and Possessor for me is like a highly, highly revered. I love that film. Antiviral is a badass other body horror film that's great with Caleb Landry Jones. Fantastic acting in that film. So I was highly trusting him to deliver on this film. But did he fully kick the landing spot? Let's go into the mixed and negatives right now. Because we must be honest. Like I said, I love my boy Brendan Cronenberg. But I got to be honest with him. And I don't think he necessarily stuck the landing with this film. And like I said in my intro, this is his most highly conceptual film. Compared to Possessor and Antiviral, this is his most ambitious. And the one that has the highest, most intelligent concept I think but I don't think he sticks the landing I have a lot of fun with the first two acts the setup to this film and the middle act are fabulous I feel the tension I feel the thrills and I'm interested in the story and where it's going to take us but when we get to the final I would say 25 minutes that's where Brendan kind of lost me a bit that's the part of the film where I was like, oh, how is he going to stick the landing? And then it hit a certain point and I was like, yeah, there's no turning back. He's not going to be able to salvage this third act for me. So in terms of that, that's probably my main problem with this film is that he wasn't able to stick that landing spot. And like I said, there's a lot of great ideas in this film and a lot of good kind of sci-fi stuff. That's another thing is I wouldn't classify this as horror. There's some graphic imagery in this film for sure. But I wouldn't necessarily classify this as like a horror film. This is more of like a sci-fi thriller type film in my opinion. One other negative I have with this film is that there, like I said, there's a lot of ideas with it. I brought that up. But that Brendan Cronenberg doesn't really commit to any of these ideas really. And like I said, you're going through the film and you get a lot of questions, but you don't get a lot of answers by the end of it. And another thing for me that's a negative is going to be Alexander Skarsgård. I love him as an actor and he does a fantastic job, but in this film he's just kind of there and he's a very surface level type character and I kind of understand what they were going for and I feel like the main theme of this film was kind of if you get into the wrong crowds, what that can lead you into and what their, you know, kind of peer pressure is like and, you know, how they can guide you into the wrong path and how that just, you know, transpires into this downward spiral of insanity. And there's a lot of, like said, sci-fi crazy stuff in here as well. I don't want to spoil anything. So there's, there's a lot of elements to this film. But like I said, Alexander Skarsgård, I think he's a very surface level character. And in terms of his acting and his potential, they didn't really ask him to do a lot. He's just kind of there. He's kind of just like a hot guy that's there. And I must confess, I went to this film with my wife. We had a date night, and I did have a lot more fun with this film, of course, than she did. I must must say, she was honest about it, and I loved talking to her about it because she was truly honest about it, and she felt like this film had no real direction in it, that it was kind of just a bunch of jumbled ideas with no real direction. And she thinks Skarsgård's pretty hot. And she was like, Skarsgård could have been naked for half of this movie and it wouldn't have saved it for her. So it was a pretty down, dirty, like bad film. She had fun. Like it was a fun date night for us. And we had a great time, you know, spending time out of the house away from the kids and stuff. But yeah, in terms of the film, my wife wasn't feeling it. But me, I had fun with this film. But it definitely is in terms of Brendan Cronenberg's catalog of the three films of his that are out. This is my least favorite of his films. But like I said, there's still some things to take away from this film. Is that it's a cool concept that I think is just not honed correctly. But it is ambitious. And if you're into an ambitious kind of artsy film that has a lot of good acting. Some shocking moments and some kind of jump scary parts. And really good cinematography and music. This is going to be right up your alley, but this is very much a slow burn type film that you have to commit to. It's right under two hours. It's about an hour and 57 minutes, so it's a shade under two hours. So you have to commit to it. But for, for real, if you're not attached to kind of the atmosphere or the vibe of this film, you're not going to be down with it because there's not really a lot of likable characters or any kind of relatability in the story. So you have to be really into the vibe 
and the atmosphere that Brendan Cronenberg is trying to create in this film if you're going to enjoy it. And in terms of a rating for me, Infinity Pool is going to get a 7 out of 10 in my book. I definitely wanted this film to be better. I had higher expectations for it. Like I said, a 7 out of 10 is not a bad rating. That's still a positive rating for me, but compared to... Um, Possessor, which is a 9.5 out of 10 film for me, and then Antiviral, which is an 8 out of 10 film for me. This is the one, like I said, where I felt like Brandon Cronenberg kind of missed the mark a little bit. But like I said, he didn't drop the ball heavy. I just think that he could have had maybe a couple more runs in the script, like in the writing room, in the script. Maybe a couple more rewrites, honing in a little bit more of the themes and stuff like that, and having a little bit more of a direction with the film. I think that would have served the film a lot better, and we the ending shot would have paid off a lot more. But thanks for sticking around with me all for this rad movie review of Infinity Pool. Please let me know in the comment section if you've seen this film. Did you enjoy this film or were you just not feeling this one at all? Any kind of vibes or any kind of thoughts, I would love to hear from all of you. But be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing on the channel because I pop out a lot of content and you don't want to miss anything. Pretty soon I'm going to be doing my season review for Cobra Kai Season 3. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.